Hey there, and welcome back to Trainwreck, an educational monster train series where you watch me struggle at around 200 pack shards. Incredible. Let's play some monster train. I've been looking forward to this particular episode. I couldn't tell you why. I've just been looking forward to it. And you know what? I don't have to justify myself, so that's okay. What episode is this, actually? Now that I'm thinking about it, what was our last champion? I know we had, I think it was Primordium, if memory serves. Yeah, that seems accurate. So we had a very interesting self-infused Horned Warrior angle, which is not something I pretty much ever do, but was fully enabled by Damage Shield 3 on the, on the Horned Warrior, right? Thanks to the Umbra upgrade. And there was, of course, a multi-strike in there as well. And ultimately, we were loading it up with Superfood 2. We had Stalwart Snack 1 in there. It was a self-infused Rage Imp somewhere in that run. We eventually got Endless, so there's that as well. I had three copies of a plus 30 and 10 in piercing event, which is always awesome. And then a last stand to basically put us at the top levels, right? We would get our Rage to the point where it's winning, like, immediately. So... So that's pretty exciting. We had a really good run of it. It's a very solid run that does something that I don't normally get a chance to do, which is interesting. That self-infused Horned Warrior, just Horned Warrior infusion in general is very risky because fragile is tough and it's tough to find units who want to do that, especially outside of the clan, right? Almost everything is just looking for health. You want to survive. You want. You can't afford to get hit once and die. So, kind of an interesting challenge. Now, it does mean today we get to move on to Fade, which is exciting. So, yeah, so that's great. I'm happy to have Fade play. Let's do it then. Not much else to really add. So, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's see what the heck Fade has for us today. This is probably going to be good because it's Fade, but you never know, right? It could be tough, maybe. Let's see. Is there something I want to play? Maybe a cool Spikes run would be fun. We'll see. I find Spikes is generally much harder at 200 shards than at 100, but because there's so many more elites, it's much harder to keep her alive, etc., etc. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's get in on it then. All right. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing okay. I'm doing, honestly, better than okay, if I were being honest. I'm feeling pretty good. It's actually a nice, to, uh, nice weekend. Feeling upbeat about it, ready to play some monster train, so let's do it. It's a pretty decent start. I'm not mad about this. So we are today Exile Melting, Exile Stygian. So we have foregone powers, a fine setup. We could easily make something like Firelight work here with just random sweepers, sirens, kind of whatever. Seems good to me. We're facing Days Talos, Spell Shield Arcus, Chased Seraph with Wicklash, Energy Siphon, Wicked Blaze. I'll always take an extra reform. That's a very easy add. Happy to have it. And then Wicklashes are good to preserve my burnout stacks, right? That opens up a lot of options here and also keeps me going for Relentless, which I love. Energy Siphon is not very good here, but, you know, it's fine. It could be worse. This is a 200 shard run. Reminder to self. Today, temples are on two, four, five, and eight. Four temples at least. Uh, if it was three, it would be a little bit dicey, but four is good. I think we should be able to confidently push past 200, no problem. Removal dupe on magic side on eight is fun. Always happy to see that. Magic and steel shops on seven, no removals. Steel has cave and hoard. Magic has just some money and health, kind of whatever. But steel side's obviously stronger there. Removal dupe, money... Removal do double money, actually, on six, which is odd. There's no trinket shop immediately after, so I'm a little less inclined to do that, especially when the trinket shop is actually opposing it on the other side of six. So money in the middle of six, trinket shop with cave is okay. It could certainly be better, but it's not bad. Magic and steel on five. Noting, actually, there's no magic or steel on six, which is kind of an interesting miss. Let's see, the Vortex on 5 is on the magic side with the cape. Pretty strong. Steel side's still okay, though. Money and a horde, it's all right. Steel Shop has Vortex and Remnant banner on 4. Random Stygian banner on 4, noting the lack of magic. Probably a double magic early then. Yeah, we do see the double magic early on. 
Steel Shop on two has a Stygian banner, Remnant banner on, on the Magic side, and then another Stygian banner on three. So a good Stygian setup of units here. This makes Firelight very optimal, I think. Not a very good Spikes Fade run, if I'm being honest. You'd basically just be reforming a bunch. There's no support for it in the clan at all. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but we'll see. Yeah, Eternal Flame or Icarus. Can I make Icarus work? I wonder. Eternal Flame is probably stronger, right? I'm thinking like a great example would be just like a normal Stygian run of Double Sirens. Fade in the back at Relentless, Fade Elevators early on. It's probably got, that's probably it, right? It's probably it. I think that's going to be better than Icarus here. It's going to be hard to make Icarus work, and it doesn't take much in the early game to really throw me for a loop, right? All I need is like one bad combat. Let's take Flame. I think Flame is going to be better here, unfortunately, but it is what it is. We'll grab the money. Mark of a Champion. I mean, Mark of a Champion is awesome. I like Totem Fragment too. It makes my spells, which I will probably draft some of, very strong. Two spell weakness when they go upstairs is huge. But Mark of a Champion is, after very little effort, a lot of damage for Fade. So let's take that. I'm happy with that. Both of those are really good, by the way. Both of those are really good. Unit draft here. This would have been a not terrible Spikes Fade opener, but it would have been not great either. We wouldn't have gotten many kills, is the problem. Yeah, we would not have gotten many kills. I will drop a train steward upstairs. We'll frost down bottom, no problem. Let's see, may as well elevator. Fade can go middle, that should be fine. She gets to 45, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna toss her the Wicklash here, just so that she burns out. Yeah. The way this is going to work, we get the Collector, she's going to die on the Foot Soldier, which is honestly perfect, right? 100% perfect. And then... I think the right way of handling this is actually just Train Steward upstairs, Fade drops in. You could Elevator Fade. It's actually fine to Elevator Fade here, right? Yeah, just... We just elevator her and that's fine. It doesn't really matter, but I think this will get the kill a little bit faster. So yeah, already dead. 105 damage. I mean, that's really Mark of a Champion doing huge work here. So big fan of that. Molten Encasement. I have enough reforms, Primitive Mold and the Wicked Blaze. I'm not leaning towards Molded. I already have Wick Lashes. I'll take the Stealth Tomb. Sure, I could see that being decent. Ice Tornado, Energy Siphon. I'll take the Offering Token. If we end up on Incants, it's fine. Titan Sentry? Sure, we'll play Shark. Shark is good. We didn't end up on Firelight, so I'm less inclined on Cold Kalia there. With Shark, I'm happy to go for the Steel Shop. Maybe see an Endless here. It would be nice. Large Stone. It's not terrible. We get our pick. Siren, Siren. I think we do want Sirens of the Sea here, in my opinion. Rage will get cut down by Chase, but most importantly, my incants are not going to be terribly strong. I'm going to be playing an endless unit, so Siren of the Sea giving some health seems good. Great. That's a nice pickup because now it means I can incant armor 2 on her, and my hope is just reroll and either multi strike or endless are both awesome. Well, we got quick. That's neither of the ones we wanted, which is a bummer. Ah. I didn't take Ice Tornado, and so I am punished by being unable to take Magic Power. I'm going to purge an Energy Siphon here. That's a bummer. I can still make 200 shards, even without this. It's just not what I wanted. I would have loved to have taken that, but there wasn't a great target for it. No plus 25s either. I guess I'll put a Burnout 1 in the Molten Encasement, right? You never know. That could be good. We don't see another option for Steel Shop for a while now, so that's fine. We'll take another unit draft. I'll take an infusion if they got it. It's fine. We should crush this combat relatively safely, yeah? Yeah, just toss a Wicklash down here, kills a guy. The Shark, I'm also going to drop in the Shark. Seems good. This Frostbite will do some good work here. I may as well double Wicklash here, right? No reason not to. Sure, seems fine. 
Now, I do clear up here pretty well. I never access the collector, unfortunately, which is a bit of a bummer. I'm thinking it's train steward siren. Then we burn the energy siphon to incant. We fade downstairs, which kills a guy, and then we incant upstairs. We do kill the enemies, which is fine. I can drop in fade again, which is okay. She shoots one and then dies, which is kind of perfect. Then I can Wicked Blaze back the train steward, which face tanks this and burns out, but that's okay. We're fine with it, right? Like, no problem. Then we elevator fade. Cool, 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 cool. That seems good. Yeah, seems good. We'll go ahead and foreground power up top. I guess I could have added Frostbite or whatever. It's fine. The elevator fade wins this combat, though, very confidently with no real concern. Yeah, one attack up here gets the kill. Great job. Got the kill. Good job. All right, we take no damage. We didn't get the collector, but it's okay. We got everything else. A bomb. A bomb is not bad. Dripfall is maybe the angle. I do like Dripfall. Purifying Cleanse? I don't know. I'm not thinking about being on Burnout Line. Although, if it, it could be okay with the Wick Lashes in play. Do I want the bomb? We could do Bomb into Molten Encasement. A lot of units for an Incant line is my only real concern. I'm going to grab Dripfall here, I think. Maybe it's Purifying Cleanse. No, I'm going to grab Purifying Cleanse. I think we can make some burnout happen here. I'll take Flash Freeze as well. I want the ping and the magic power. Worth noting that I can actually take magic power from Purifying Cleanse as well. Lodestone Totem. Okay, that is a functional infusion. Right? That's a functional infusion. Sure? Sure. It's a little jank, but it's strong enough. The dupe, no. We're going to go to the right here. Strange. Magic Shop has holdover on access. Makes a holdover Wicklash pretty tempting. Teth Scales, Pyrewall, Golden Vault. The Golden Vault's not bad here. Especially if we end up on Lodestone Totem Angle. Pyrewall's probably going to save a lot of health if we go there. I think Pyrewall might be marginally better than Golden Vault from here. Or we could take Teth Scales. We don't have great options for spell damage right now. I mean, it could be like Ancient Synergy taken later or something, but... We didn't get a Crystallis, anything like that. I'm actually going to grab Pyrewall here because I don't want to risk my money like this right now. And Tethys Scale is a little low impact. Pyrewall should be immediate value, though. Second Shark, I think, is the angle. We'll go Shark into Shark and then load Sun Totem into Siren and hopefully make that work. Hold over here has got to be something that scales damage. I mean, it's going to be Wicklash, right? There's just no question in my mind. It's too good to skip. Cool, we have it. All right, temple, or the cave rather, says, Spike Driver Colony's infusion is endless. It makes Shark much worse than self-infusing him. I guess I could take the rail spike, right? I don't hate the rail spike here. I'll grab the rail spike, actually. I don't think there was a 20 consume in here handy. No, it's just a plus 10. It can take some plus 30s, 10 in piercings pretty decently. I'm going to save the rest of this and move on. I'm leaning towards Steel Shop coming up. I want to save my money. Yeah. I won't have a ton of cash, actually, unfortunately. This is the combat that doesn't give a lot of payout, so unfortunate, but fine. I will face tank with fade upstairs. It's good to do it. Siren dropped in. Shark can just go live mid floor. We'll frostbite upstairs. All good. Great work. I could play the totem. It's a pretty good totem, if I'm being honest with you. It's a 
pretty good totem. I'll drop the totem in. I think I'm happy with this totem. It's a good addition. We clear the next floor anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Shark can airdrop in, then the rest of this hangs out and clears just fine. We'll go ahead and reform. Good incants. Good. Mid floor gets cleared. If I get a reform, that's great because Shark. I'm going to go ahead and play Fade upstairs because she attacks and then dies, and that's kind of perfect. I will play the reform because it gets Shark back online downstairs. Excellent. I'm going to put stats into the unit in the back. There's no spikes coming up, right? I don't think so. I'm going to put them in the lodestone totem here, I think. That's my angle. Yeah, that'll work out. Okay, shark dies. It's fine. Primitive mold. It's good. Shark comes back. Great work. Wicklash in the back is your friend. We're going to extend that burnout to the best of our ability. Fade can airdrop in, and that's cool because she kills someone. We'll incant upstairs. It's enough sap that I don't think we take too much here. It's like one pop, maybe. No, we're actually chilling. Fade drops in downstairs. She pummels some things, which is pretty cool. We do get a flash freeze. I don't know if I mind that. I think I'm actually just going to hit the boss with it, right? Seems good to me. I only take the one upstairs anyway, so whatever. We just elevator fade here. And that's super easy. I mean, shark actually. I mean, that kills, right? Yeah, 100%. Seems good to me. Yeah, that seems pretty solid. Not mad about that at all. I could grab Deep Offering. Deep Offering is maybe acceptable. I could make some real strong plays out of this. I could also sell this. Selling it comes with the advantage that I might be able to re-roll this shop, potentially. It's not very likely. I think I am going to sell this, though, right? I don't think this is the pickup anyway. Oh, Eel Gorgon. What the heck? What if... What the heck? Wait a second. Can I do some real jank nonsense here? Eel Gorgon infused with Lodestone Totem, if I take Ember, is oddly effective? Very expensive for Ember, but it gets rid of its own Ember Drain, which is kind of cheeky. It's a real good take on Wicklash, right? Really good, in fact. I should grab the Eel Gorgon. The most important thing about the Eel Gorgon is it takes a large stone well. I think I'm going to take the Ember here because I'm anticipating some real nonsense. And it's going to involve Lodestone Totems somehow. And we'll go left. What's in the Steel Shop? Multi-Strike. Okay. The Multi-Strike changes how I approach this. I'm not taking the Lady or the Wickless Baron here. These are fine. Yeah, the, the Multi-Strike is... This was the driving force. You take this... What is it called? You take this Eel Gorgon because if I end up seeing Large Stone here, I pivot to Eel Gorgon. And I put the Lodestone Totem inside of it, and then I use Wicklash to scale. Great. With Multi-Strike on deck like this, we're going to go Siren of the Sea here. Which is still plenty to win, by the way. And we're going to Lodestone Totem into the Siren, and then Eelgorgon will get dumped. Will I? You know you could do... Eel Gorgon into Siren of the Sea. Or I could go the other direction. And I could go Siren of the Sea into Eel Gorgon. Get some health scaling. The Lodestone Totem seems like that's a much more likely chance to win. These are all winning lines. Is such an interesting realization. Plus 30. Yeah, all right, sure. Here, we'll toss this in the automatic rail spike. That seems like a worthwhile upgrade. 
The Purge here is probably just a... I don't... I mean, Energy Siphon's not good. I guess I'll burn a Forgone Power, right? It's hard. I don't want five of them. I'll click that for sure. Now, I'm doing that infusion. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. We're going to take Eternal Flame too, for sure. Yeah, easy. Easy money on that. Now, this is such a tough call. The Multi-Strike makes this very difficult because Multi-Strike makes Siren of the Sea infuse with Lodestone Totem a winning line, right? We just Lodestone Totem pretty much everything down to the dust and then Siren of the Sea cleans up Relentless. Little Fade drops in in the back, murders everything. Easy. Game is simple. Eel Gorgon infused with Lodestone Totem. Also very cool. Four Ember, a little expensive, but I'm not mad about it because it removes all status effects. Still, it's a little bit dicey in terms of incanting the Eel Gorgon to healthy, right? He only has three health. Very difficult to keep it alive turn one, two without like a large stone or something, which is functional. Fine. No problem. I only really need one of them, right? I don't need that many if I'm going in on this. So there's that option. There's also the option of Ilgorgon into the Siren for an extra multi-strike. And then you just find like a some plus 25s for Mr. Lodestone Totem. Stick him in front and he just kind of saps down Divinity while Siren scale in the back. I think we want to, I think we're going to take advantage of the multi-strike that we're shown though. I think it's going to be Siren of the Sea. And I think the easy way of winning, I don't want to say easy, the easiest way of winning from this position is simply the Lodestone Totem Infusion here. I think so. Yeah, I think so. All right, we're going to do this. It's present. I think it's worth it to do it because it's here. I'm going to cut the Gorgon now because it's getting in my way. Yes. Well, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to actually grab the Lodestone Totem's Infusion first. I want to make sure I get him on the floor stat. I guess I kind of don't have to cut the Gorgon quite yet. He could he could show up and actually be okay on the floor for the time being. He could be a good mid-game play, actually. Good vessel for Wicklash. All right, I think that's fair. He could be a good mid-game play. We'll keep him around. I'm going to cut some train stewards instead then. I want both sharks because obvious reasons. I think that makes sense. They're going to self-infuse later. I think we chill on our money spend here. All right, we're good. Moving on. Okay. I think we can get away with this aggressive amulet, right? I have Fade kind of popping off in a big fashion. Yeah, so it's just Fade in front downstairs, and then we put a shark in. Cool. Cool. The one downside is this makes accessing a mid-floor collector tougher. But I can just play another shark mid-floor, right? And it actually works out perfectly well. And then we go fade downstairs and we kill the... Ah, I actually can just reform this shark, right? Fun. And then we frostbite in the front. Seems okay. We get the collector, we clear mid-floor. Seems okay, all things considered. Now, I want to play Fade middle, because she kills in front, then dies. And I wish to get the Siren down upstairs. But I would like to avoid the Ember Drain, so let's Molten Encasement first, then Siren. And then, this guy actually does hit me, so let's go ahead and Purify and Cleanse in front. Ooh, I don't want that, though. I could Purify and Cleanse in back. I don't want this thing living, is the thing. If it burns out, that's fine. Three turns? In three turns, I'm guaranteed to see a Wicklash. I think we're okay. Click it. All right, we get the kill. Go team. Okay, mid-floor, clearing out. Good. Go upstairs. First action is Primitive Mold. See what we hit. Shark is your friend. Second primitive mold, see what we hit. Molten encasement. The shark goes and lives upstairs. That's just for sure going to happen. Cool. Fade can and will live upstairs here, I think. Because 
she pummels for a lot of damage, right? Yeah. Swing, good. Swing, five, break, good. Incant. Chilling. All right. Floor does get cleared. Good. We have the Wicklash. Excellent news. Play the Wicklashes. Good. Play the Wicked Blaze. Let's bring back Big Shark. He can chill. Incant again. We actually clear the floor incredibly. Surprised that that is true. I could and should consider popping this conduit in the back. It's not a fully upgraded rail spike, but I should do it anyway, I think. Let's go ahead and incant first, actually. Yes, this is fine. We'll pop in the back for sure. Cool. I'm going to play the shark because it might as well get some frostbite in. And then we will foregone power to burn that card. Okay, fine. Yeah, I don't actually have any real struggles with that whatsoever. It's all fine. Wicklash is good. Click it. We reform something. Shark middle seems strong. It's like 100 damage, right? We'll keep incanting. We should crush upstairs, right? I have no doubt, actually. Yeah, this is simple, right? We just airdrop in the stealth. It's even easier now. And then you shoot here, and it's chilling. Cool. We don't actually even kill the the tomb there. So we're, we're super okay on that combat. Good. Votivary is good and bad. Good in the sense that it is kind of another extinguish trigger if I hit the wax or snuff, or bad in that it's another unit and doesn't trigger lodestone totem. Memories of the Melted is fine, I suppose. It's hard to make that usable early. Second Wicked Blaze. I think we sell these. Yeah, we sell it. It's fine. Unnamed Tome, I will snap click from this position. Except Glacial Seal. No, how did I skip you? My guy. All right, let's go and look for Endless. I think it's going to be Endless here, right? It's just a good choice, I think. Now, you could argue Caverns is pretty solid, right? The Magic Shop's okay, but I already hit the Holdover. I think I would rather find the Endless now. Yeah, let's do it. Money. We'll look at the Steel Shop quick. Plus 25 is at least something. Capricious Reflection at this point is almost certainly going to be purely positive, so we'll grab that. Take some stuff in the middle. And Tenon Piercing is excellent. Load up this Rail Spike. The final spike. Spell Chain. In fact, is it not just Spell Chain on this other Rail Spike now? Is that not the superior choice? Let's, let's take the plus 25 into Shark and spin it. Endless is incredible. Shark being online like this is super valuable. Amazing work. I'm not super keen on Mr. Tomb here because, well, I have Sap, so I don't really need stealth if I'm being honest with you. I think he can probably go. And I think, honestly, at this point, I'm probably okay cutting the Gorgon too. Well, it's tough. That last combat was dicey, but we had a bad draw order. I'm going to leave the Gorgon for now. Uh, it's tough. I could cut a train steward instead if I'm concerned. The Gorgon gets in the way of my draw order. The three banner units, I've at least cut the one by infusing the shark. Shark's very powerful, by the way. It's going to help a lot. I don't think I need the Gorgon here. I think I'm going to drop him. I think he will get enough in my way from this position that I don't want to deal with it. We're done with Steel Shops. Amazing. Ancient Hate should be okay. It's good money. Happy to have it. Give me an early Shark, please. Also, fine. Airdrop in the Siren. All good. Flash freeze here. We pop one in the back. Seems strong. All in cant upstairs. All good. Shark going middle gets me money, which I do value in a big way. We want to elevate her into the bottom floor friend anyway, which is fine. I'll take that. How are we looking upstairs? 
not terribly well. I could drop in Fade here. I don't really want to do that that early, though. It's kind of a concern. I could sap this guy down low enough that it's probably fine. Let's airdrop in Fade and get her shot, I think. And we'll just sap the guy upstairs down and hope that it's enough. I want to take one hit here, yeah. It's only two, though, and it's only the Pyre Wall, so it's not that bad. Burnout extension, for sure. I'm going to unname Tome upstairs, I think. I want to get rid of that back thing. We get the kill, we take zero here. I'm gonna go ahead and play Fade Middle. She's pushing what? 50% more than this is like just under 100 or something. If this kills the front guy, that's pretty solid. It does actually push 140. That's really solid, I'm happy about that, yeah. Well worth it, in my opinion. All right, let's scale upstairs, see how we do. Primitive Mold. I think we are going to double ping the Shaman here. Right? <laughs> it doesn't actually connect and kill. Unreal. That makes sense, though. It goes 5 to Pyre Wall. It's fine. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. We scale upstairs. It's okay. Discard Garbage. I think this is the moment... Uh, no, we're clearing this up here. I'm going to go ahead and play the Train Steward because it dies horribly, and that's perfect. And we can Elevator Fade now, which I think is the most worthwhile thing we could do. And this should be solid, right? Fade drops in, does a chunk. Yeah, I think this will be the way we want to do it. Frostbite is your friend. Happy to have it. Okay, we should easy win this, right? Yeah, we crushed this. Good job. Fade gets only one attack. The sweep is a big deal, but we beat it on the siren. No damage taken. Thank you, Pyrewall. Very cool. Wicked Blaze. Ah, oh, man, I love, love this. Give me that capricious reflection value. Fatal Melting suddenly looks a lot more attractive with only one arm Ember cost. Very cool. I'll take it. Hold over Preserve. That's actually, like, not amazing, but not bad. It's interesting to me because I can use that to offset a bad draw on the Sirens. You see, like, an Intrinsic, and that's actually pretty good. I can also just, like, hold on to it if I don't want to play it. Yeah, all right, I'll take that. Sure. Interesting cards. Stuff I would not normally do. I could go try to high roll, or I can dupe at this point the dupe in the removal is pretty powerful admittedly that's true there's a lot of stuff i could see on the trinket side that's pretty strong though waxer snuffer founding seal i have lots of money i could overstack on the cave i don't need three sirens i'm gonna dupe it on eight no matter what let's go left let's look at this trinket shot and see what we hit i can see some real good pickups here Memorial Fund Icicle Fracture is another solution, possibly, to drawing both Sirens at once. I'll trade Pyre Health here. Oh, Lightstone Casing. Sure, I'll take that. Five Pyre Health for Lightstone Casing. Suddenly, I want to upgrade the Rail Spike one more time before cloning it anymore. It's kind of funny. I don't think I want these Relics. They're fine, but whatever. I already have... Icicle Fracture, you can make it work to freeze things and make big turns. It's good, but it's not 240 gold good. Ah, bummer. Conscription Notice, Hammered Chest Plates, Rationing Scales, all bad. I'm going to cut Train Stewards, I guess. It's a bummer, but it's going to be fine. Do I need those? Let me make sure I don't need those. Do I need this 50 shards? I looked at it, I was like, I have two units. I have the tomb and I have the train steward. I removed one, but now before I cut the other, let me think about this. 15 here is 160. I'm duping, that's 175. I can get it as long as I have the ability to take all 25 at the end, which is guaranteed with the rail spikes and the lightstone casing. So I think we're actually good to cut this here. Thank goodness. 
No garbage infusions today. Moving on. We should handily defeat Arcus. Yes. Interesting. Let's drop in Titan Sentry first. And then I guess Fade can die, and that's okay. I'm fine with that, right? No big deal. The rest of this chills. Sure. All right, we have Thyrin will drop in. That's good. An interesting set of decisions though, right? It's just kind of curious to me. My ability to like, I can incant here and that's pretty cool. Or I can save stuff. The permafrost is kind of annoying with foregone powers, admittedly, but that's kind of a whatever, right? I don't know how to feel about that, really. I don't think I'm going to need the Unnamed Tome here. Let's just burn all this stuff and go for the incants. I want to try to make sure I'm actually winning this run. This is what? Rally Shard? Sure, sure. That's fine. We'll airdrop in Fade. She'll get shot. It's good. What's coming up? Wrong button. Magic Shop. Magic Shop, I get a 20 consume, and then I can do some real big copies. So we go Magic Shop here, and we try to get every single cop. We try to pull the final Rail Spike upgrades then. I'm just debating if I need to pop these now. And I think the answer is no, I don't. This is a very good turn to sap the boss as low as I physically can. Every little bit matters, yes. Get it, Fade. Kill a man and then die. It's good. Sap this guy to nothing. He's going to hit me a little, but it's not going to be too bad. Yeah, he only pops me for four there. That's okay. Top floor is chilling, I believe. I am going to preserve dead weights. They're going to get discarded. Bottom floor, I think Fade drops in. That will be good. She kills someone. We just incant upstairs. It's okay. It's definitely slowing us down. Definitely slowing us down here. Woof. You can tell. Fade comes in. Plays something. Dies. Almost. Interesting. I think upstairs, the play is to Molten Encasement first. It's an Incant Shard, which I should watch out for, but I'm not terribly worried about it. I would li I'd like to Incant first. Even if I suffer a penalty, I think it's worth it. We pop in the back, and that is going to have to be enough. Okay. All right, we finally draw the Wicklash here, which is good. Good to see it. I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy and pop him again. And then Wick, and we go ahead and keep clicking on cards. It's fine. Fade in the back is maybe, you know, suboptimal, I suppose. But we can always actually play the stealth downstairs and push big numbers, and I'm okay with that. It's a weird floor, but true. Frostbite here does like 30 damage. That's worth it, I think. And then we elevator both of these guys, right? It's Titan Sentry and then Fade smacking for 300s in the back, I think. It's pretty much the truth of it. And then we Frostbite here. Yeah, this seems effective at winning. This will get it. Okay. It's not clean. But it is winning, and that will do. Weird. All right, fine. We don't have a great situation yet. That preserve is a little bit of a bummer. How do you feel about Hallowed Halls? It's kind of a weird pickup. One cost deep offering. We should never skip, though. We take that for sure. That's good. Card draw, 100%. 10 times out of 10, we want to draw cards. I'm going to the magic shop. Yes. 
health, money, hoard today, says Sigil Seaweed, probably. Fade's First Blade does increase scaling on the Burnout Siren. I think Sigil Seaweed will be stronger overall. I'm looking for a 20 consume. Yeah, okay, here we go. 20 consume is pretty big brain on the rail spike here. Excellent. A minus one. I may as well make... What? Fatal Melting 3? Wicklash probably should be free first. Sure. Permafrost is tempting, but no. We already have the Preserve. Remove Consume. There's a world where I get like minus 2 or Remove Consume here and we have an infinite off of the Deep Offering. Do we gamble on it? I think we do. Huh. Especially if we see, like, Kinstone Totem. Let's click this. And the minus one can go elsewhere for now. The plus ten, I'm gonna put this in something. We're gonna put this in, like, the other rail spike. It's something, okay? Because I'm trying to dupe them here, so I want to make sure that we do as much as we can. The minus one here. I mean, I guess you could minus one the rail spike if you wanted to. It's not terrible, right? I guess it adds 10 damage. It's equivalent, right? It's okay. Making Fatal Melting free seems better, though. I think I'm going to go for the Rail Spike here. The, ra the opportunity cost matters, because I'm going to be trying to buff that thing up to very high levels. Eternal Flame 3, sure. We should be okay. We move on now. Yeah. We should be okay. Heaven Seal on Winged Horde is acceptable. If this were like Penitent, no way. But this one, this is defeated by Shark, essentially. Right? Just Shark is huge and kills everything here, and it's great. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put... Fade in front? Uh, it's not good, though, is it? 10. Fade in front dies, and then we have, what, 20, 40, 50, 60 damage coming through. The Titan Sentry does not die right away, which causes a problem. Let's fade middle, then, I think. And then we'll give her the burnout, just in case. I'm going to go ahead and pres... I'm not going to click preserve. No way. I'm just going to hold on to it. It's fine. It's a lot of good frostbite there. Okay, mid floor looking all right. I'm going to go ahead and siren upstairs. I think it's important to do it. Shark goes and lives downstairs. I think it's important he's down there. Let's freeze upstairs. I don't really have to do this. I'm going to go ahead and frostbite the Gilded Wings here. Seems okay. Alright, the action here. I need to kill here, or I need to do a lot of sap. Which I think I can do both. So let's fade middle then. And then up here, we're just going to keep clicking cards, pretty much. That is the goal. The Molten Encasement is not the angle here. And then we sap, we shoot, we shoot. We sap this to as low as we can get it, and it will die on Frostbite while fighting upstairs, right? Yeah, okay, fine. Good, great, excellent. Shark must go middle, in my opinion. Yep. I could play Fade here for 180... I think I need to. Plus 16 damage is going to be a lot here, right? I think we do need to drop in Fade on this one, if I'm being real with you. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to go ahead and click stuff. I think this is all fine. Draw some things. Cool, I hit the Wicklash, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and use this Rail Spike to pop something. On middle? On middle, yes. Good. We sap upstairs, we go for the incant. It should be fine. 
Yeah, I want to make sure on mid floor I kill pretty much all of these guys simultaneously if I can. We should pop someone on middle for sure. Kill one of these guys. Seems good. And we frostbite up here. That's okay. Shark unfortunately does not get carried very well here. We clear upstairs reasonably comfortably at least. Shark must die on mid floor. Yes, 100%. We just draw cards and chill, I believe. Let's discard this preserve. It's kind of garbo. We clear the floor, but we take 21 damage to do it. It could be worse, right? Could be worse, I think. We elevator shark. We scale upstairs. These are worthwhile things to do. We pop something downstairs. I want to create copies of this card, right? Very important. Elevator shark is your friend. Let's actually just click Deep Offering and draw through. And then I think this is as simple as Primitive Mold, Self Ping to kill Fade for the Scaling and the Slay Trigger, and then the Incant. Okay. Now, Fade in the back, very strong. How do I feel about Stealth Tomb here? We sap here for sure, right? Stealth Tomb seems pretty good. I think adding 70 health to the floor saves me a full round as well, which represents probably another 300, 578, which comes pretty close to a kill, if I'm being honest with you. I wish I could play Encasement, snipe the Encasement, then play Shark. I think two turns of stealth is worth more than what Shark offers here. So we'll do this, and I'm going to snipe him, and we get the kill. Yeah. The nice thing is, because the way Trample works, this actually works out in my favor. The free extra round. And we get the extra kill there, which is good. All right. We make it. Oof. Spicy. Intent on death, tempting. It's gonna be resin removal, though. I promise you, resin removal is great. Is it? Intent on death might be really sick. I do really like intent on death, if I'm being real with you. I think it's gonna be resin removal, though. I think it's gotta be resin removal. Yeah, it does. It does. Double stack, frenzied swarm. Hilarious. Remove, consume, unnamed tome. They made the card worse. Okay. Urchin Spines. I think we sell this one. This one's not it. Double stack, Frenzied Swarm is tempting, but it's okay. We have big upgrade to Rail Spikes incoming. All of them get a fourth upgrade now. So they're feeling pretty good. That is a big jump in damage here. Each one is doing at a baseline like 70, 70. You've got some 60s in here. Sure. Yeah, fine seems good we go left yes i need to spell chain we didn't hit the minus two and you know what it's gonna have to be okay 10 and piercing on the fatal melting is probably it spell chain here though is i mean that's just on the wicklash right that's huge scaling it's also extremely efficient from an incant perspective so we 100 percent do that yes absolutely Give me, like, Founding Seal, please, maybe. Boon of the Blacksmith, Precious Plating, Winged Technology, or an Indulgence. Let's spin this. Ah, bummer. None of the good stuff. None of the really good stuff there. Which is indeed unfortunate. Minus one. No Kinstone Totem, either. One minus one is going into Fatal Melting. I want to put the Tendon Piercing in that. That will be good. Nice. We like that. The dupe here is obvious. There's no choice, really. It simply must be Lodestone Totem Lady. 100%. 200 shards. We made it. 20 and consume. Remove consume? No, 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 no. 
Do I want to 20 consume something? I could 20 consume a purifying cleanse, right? It's okay to do that. I have a lot of trash in my deck, unfortunately. Not a big fan of that. 36 cards, only drawing six. Yikes. That is a bit of a big yikes. I think the removals are going to be nice. Most of these are rail spikes, though, so it's kind of not that bad, I suppose. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. In fact, I think this preserve was a really bad pickup. I anticipated it being a little more useful to hold things around. I was thinking if I had an intrinsic, it might be cool, but it's it's just a bad card to hold over, right? Is the thing. I can. I mean, it's not that bad of a card because I can just not play it. And it's draw once and gone, which is okay. I'm going to keep the Purifying Cleanse. I'm going to 20 consume the Flash Freeze, I think. It's acceptable to get rid of that. The Remove Consume, nah, I don't need that. We re-roll. Re 20 consume again. Permafrost? I don't think so. This minus one I'm putting into Deep Offering. Just to make this a little more playable. This permafrost is irrelevant to me, I think. Resin removal would be cool, but we're going to discard it. Yeah, we're almost certainly going to discard it. I'm buying a lot of removals here, aren't I? I think it's three cuts. I think so. One of these is going to be energy siphon because this card is just truly astronomically bad. It does... I mean, okay, it's not terrible with the rail spikes, right? We can maybe get some value out of it. I don't love it. Primitive molds are unfortunate. Ugh, I'm going to cut a foregone power for sure. It's got to go. Three is not as bad as five or four. Wicked Blaze. I have the Endless where I need it. I don't really want this card. It's expensive. It's basically just worse primitive mold in this particular deck, right? All right, we'll drop Wicked Blaze here. I'm going to buy a removal now. This purchased removal, I think, will be in... Forgone Power. Two is acceptable. I get to spend another 240 on a removal. I think this is just Primitive Mold, right? Our goal here is to improve the cards that we're playing because we have a lot of bad stuff. Okay, that's a lot of money, a lot of money spent, a lot of everything spent. But I think it's better than the relics we were shown, unfortunately. I would have loved to have picked up Waxer Snuffer or Founding Seal or... Man, I could have come up with a bunch of list of other things like First Hell Pact would have been kind of cool even. Votive Key... Then I would have Endless on Molten Encasement. At least the Wicklash with Spell Chain, I think, will carry us a bit. I'm going to burn this Purifying Cleanse. I can think of better cards I'd rather draw. This can be played once and then gone. Just play that Fatal Melting like 50 times, and that'll be pretty good. All right, 200 out of 100. This is actually not a very great fade run, but I think we still win. Let's go Chased. All right. Gross. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. It was a bad Icarus run, bad everything run, pretty much. Okay. Fade drops in on bottom floor, I think. This guy got silenced, which is important. We'll Lodestone Totem upstairs. Yes. I don't want... I'm going to preserve the Purifying Cleanse here. I guess I should shoot this guy on mid-floor to get rid of him. I think that's fine. Okay. Shark is here. Shark can go live on middle floor. That's pretty cool. We have the Wicklash, which means I do want to play that. Because I can also put the Purifying Cleanse with it, which is cool. Big Rail Spike chillin'. Let's go ahead and fade downstairs here. And then let's keep going, right? It's a pretty decent chunk into the boss. I'm not mad about that, right? Yeah, we'll shoot the boss here, and then I will foregone power. This sap will go away, and it's just something I'm going to have to deal with here. Okay. 
Got it. I need to put in other Siren here for sure. For sure, for sure. I could do this a number of ways. I could put in the Siren, preserve Titan Sentry, play Molten Encasement upstairs. Okay. Fair. I am going to play Fade Middle, for sure. I think she kills one, right? Hey, incredible. Great news. I think we do Lodestone Totem upstairs with the Molten Encasement in front here. We hold on to Titan Sentry. And I think I'm going to kill the guy in back here because... He risks, he's worth seven, I think. I actually think shooting the guy in front represents better savings overall. Four, but most importantly, he has fewer turns up there. Let's shoot him then. And this should be acceptable. I think it's just one round of both. We take like four real damage. Okay, fine. Spicy. A spicy indeed floor. Now, I can't shark up here. Let's draw first and see what we hit. Okay, it's not great, but I do get enough to kill the scary one in front. So I will click that first. Good, great, in fact, looking fine. Shark can and should, I think, go middle here. Yes. Let's get rid of his 27 lifesteal. That seems like a wise choice. I want to fade middle floor. Yes, I think she kills one and this works out in my favor. And then we are going to keep sapping. Top floor is looking pretty comfortable. We're gonna push another 80 into the boss here. Okay, cool. It'll have to do. Gross, what a ridiculous setup. Now, Fade is, of course, completely trucking along like an absolute monster. So, I want her to be played and then killed pretty consistently here. We've actually hit all the Pyre Wings, so I'm just going to burn this Unnamed Tome. And I am going to play the Primitive Mold. You want to get that Stealth in there? Maybe? I have a lot of cards I could draw. I haven't hit that Wicklash yet. Let's go ahead and... Let's actually go ahead and Deep Offering just straight away, right? Yeah, all right, cool. Let's, with two Burnout in my back unit and none in the front, let's begin the Wicklash here, which I think will become very important. I push this guy to pretty low numbers. 12 means 24 damage reduction. He's basically never hitting me. So at this point, I could push damage into boss, or I, I mean, hitting the boss for 70s, frankly, seems really good here. Top floor should clear itself. I like the incants though, being honest, I think that those are gonna provide the most value for me. So let's just shoot this thing then, huh? Fine. I'm okay with that. I think he has to come upstairs or he doesn't, I guess. Gross. Play the important cards out. They're important for a reason. Great work. I can drop Fade in middle, and I think she does still pass away. And we kill the middle. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Bottom floor, he did roll. We did finally roll Pyre Wings without the Sigiled Seaweed. I took the unnamed tome for this guy and got banished for it. I deserve this, I suppose. It's okay. I think he has to go upstairs next, at least. So that's itself pretty cool, in my opinion. I think he actually has to. So, all right, we get some sap. It's better than it could have been, all right? That's the way we're going to look at that. I could fade middle. Does she get killed? She does. Fade middle is pretty neat here. 
incredible. She kills a guy and then dies, which is probably optimal. Let's plan around maximizing our stealth here, right? I'm at a point where I actually think killing this enemy is worth more. So we'll click that, then incant. And sap is okay here. We might be all right. Elevator fade. She should get blasted. Yes, perfect. This spell chain wicklash is doing incredible heavy lifting, by the way. Just truly doing incredible amounts of work. Shark dying is actually optimal as well, right? Actually true. Sure, I'll incant. It's fine. Shark is dead. Good. How do I feel about this? Fade can do a lot of damage mid-floor, huh? Ooh, that's a lot. Molten encasement? I mean, she's doing truckloads of work here, isn't she? That's pretty powerful, if I'm being honest with you. It's a really good sap. I do take a little bit of damage here, but it's not too bad. Okay. Now, what we do, we win already, but you airdrop in Fade in the back, and this fully pops off, pretty much, right? You just click cards, and then we... I play the preserve because there's no reason not to at this point. And then we just send it. And we just draw more garbage stuff, whatever this happens to be, and we blast them. And yeah, he saps down to minus 44 and just gets completely obliterated. Excellent. Okay. Whew. All right. We got that. Chased a little dicey. I think Divinity is going to be easier because he's easier to stay sapped, right? Once we get him to zero, it's like, all right, Shark is going to do a majority of the work here. So that looks good. Okay, all right. Shark first is doable, but most importantly, the resin removal on turn one is ridiculously huge here. So, I guess it really doesn't matter because I can actually have, I can farm fade for this purpose as well. So, there's that, but it's fine. Does not really matter. Okay, she dies. It's all right, we have the reforms for this, right? We planned for this. I knew this was coming. I think we can get this in, right? Now I could potentially, I think it's Molten Encasement Siren, and I think I shoot the encasement here is the plan. Yes. All right, mid floor is already clear. Bottom floor, let's start elevatoring and doing our work. I don't play the deep offering, unfortunately. I want one to die, one to come back, right? That's the ideal case. All right, I do have the primitive molds here. Bottom floor, we absolutely high rolled out of our mind. Our gourd is high rolled. Look at this. Ah, oh, harvest and the resolve and the extinguish. Shark must go middle. I need that back guy killed. 100%. Incredible work. Draw cards first. Don't play this purifying cleanse here. I don't want to manage burnout on two units, I don't think. Do I? I really don't. This is five burnout. That's a lot of turns. No, I think I, I think with five burnout, that's acceptable, maybe. I can spread this Wicklash out, right? We'll be okay. I think so. Okay. All right. In that case, because I want to play these to sap this thing down, right? That's the most important angle here, right? I need to sap this boss as low as I can. Fade. I mean, Fade unironically can just get shot and it's not even a risk to me right now, which is awesome. There's a lot of endless stuff that slows me down here. Okay. We do see... The primitive mold. But we do not have a Wicklash yet. That is a problem. Oh man, Capri S Sigiled Seaweed. Behold the effort on your boy Chains. Let's shark middle. I think that's worthwhile. 
Phage should just murder the front guy, and I think that is super important. Amazing. Perfect, in fact. Let's unname Tome upstairs because chains got got. I'm leaning towards preserve on the primitive mold until I have the Wicklash in hand. And I think we just blast this guy in middle, which should kill him and sap almost everything to zero here. Yes, thank you, Fade. Very cool. Extremely cool, in fact. All right, now we can go in. We go primitive mold. No, I put the molten encasement in. I am a fool. Oh, that's a bummer. All right, well, we're going to play the Wicklash anyway, I guess. That will be fine. A worthy use of my everything. I'd like to open up the boss here, Chains. So let's put Fade down. This will be acceptable. I guess I could have shot it too, right? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, yeah? Is either of these the spell chain one? No, it's not. So our angle here is basically hold on to preserve. Do I want to? Not really. I think we just shoot one guy and then shoot the next guy pretty much. Seems reasonable, right? Shoot him. And then I guess I can kill him or something. It doesn't really bother me, I suppose. We'll shoot this next guy then. That's fine. He's going to be sapped to zero here. So that should work out, I think. We let this ride. Mr. Molten Encasement can chill. And this guy walks up and does some pyre wall action, but he's not really that threatening to me. Okay. A lot of stuff. All right. Now we go in. Good grief. All right. Fade must land, by the way. There is no escaping this. All right. There she is. The other lady dropping in. She must be preserved. Yes. We must incant. I'm going to airdrop in Fade, who's doing 450 damage here, which is now huge. Excellent. We blast one of these things. And I think we know we don't blast yet. We need to play Shark. Shark is literally critical to our survival. This is Mr. Spell Chain, which is awesome because it reduces the amount of damage I take to a uh, much more manageable level. Okay, oh, we push past chains at 200 shards, which is kind of perfect. Now we're relying on sap, so... Extend your burnout. Extend your burnout. Okay, we clear the floor, which is incredible. Shark must go middle, I think. Ooh, strike. 28... Don't like this, Ember Drain. Strong argument to just kill the man in front here, yeah? Strong argument to just kill this guy in front, open this up so that I can fade into the Pyro Wings next turn. I think that's actually super correct. Let's play the Primitive Mold first for an incant. I think that's correct. Then we can pop here. Okay, I think that improves this. I could self-ping, but I don't think I want to. The guy in back, I don't fear. It's, what, 15? I mean, it's only 6... Oh, he doesn't actually die, right? The Shade Wings walks up to top, which is a bit of a bummer. I think we should kill him. We're killing him. Incant is your friend. Okay, fine. Fade doing a lot of work here. We do take Ember Drain tragically. That's okay. I think we're, we're okay with that. Let's keep the burnout juiced, right? Let's, let's keep these numbers rolling, pretty much. I'm gonna... Do I have any more blasts? No, I do not. I guess this Fatal Melt thing's kind of a blast, but it's not a very good one. Sapping upstairs is just straight up worth more to me overall, right? Every time. A little deep offering here. Yeah, Wicklash is your friend. It's good. Offering token. All fine things. I'll play the Consume Flash Freeze, I think. That's plenty of... Let's do some damage on mid-floor. This guy actually is a threat, right? Like, a super threat. 
Yeah, he's a super threat. He's he's actually a big problem. We're we're gonna leak him, I'm pretty sure. Let's try to make this do as little damage to me as physically possible here, right? We actually kill him, which is a miracle, I think. So I get the shark downstairs to clear out those backliners and Wow, thanks, Fade. Fade does a lot of work. I mean, honestly, those sirens do a lot of work, too, just being honest with you. We have a very good turn here, which means we win perfectly. Honestly, it's about as good as I could have asked for if I'm being real with you here. We just spin this. We draw past some stuff. We sap to zero pretty confidently. Oof, okay, that's a victory. That is a victory. It's a win. I mean, this this gets there for sure. Fade doing huge work on this floor. And Sap, of course, providing a lot of value as well. Just a very well-played run, I think. Not as close as one would have liked. Or, you know, not as easy as one would have liked, I suppose, is the right way to put that. But very solid altogether, regardless. We're able to push through all elements of the run. Yes. Cool, very good. Very good stuff. It's a pretty good score, too. I mean, we're almost at 60K. Go to the run summary there. The big shout out, I think we have to think back to where we decided on our run. I think the Lodestone Totem into Siren is solid. It's a solid line. It wins. It works. It gives you relentless damage. It prevents you from dying. It's strong. The... Siren of the Sea is a good pick because you don't have to deal with Chaste's cutting of rage on Nameless Siren. Chaste was pretty dicey, I think. Fade doing huge work supporting on those mini bosses, just like really pushing tall numbers. And a, a huge shout out actually to my ridiculous rail spikes, right? Quad upgrade rail spikes. I have eight of them in here. I'm basically firing these as soon as I can because they get me over the hump where my sirens are still weak and or not played. Even with the divinity, one of them died on turn one. That is terrifying. One of them died on turn one, and I said, I can win from this position, and I did. So that's pretty impressive, in my opinion. The ability to do that is a big deal, right? That's the only reason I didn't take like a plus 25 here instead, and it ended up working out in my favor. So that's pretty cool. Big shout out to Lightstone Casing giving me that Wicklash with Spell Chain. This was huge value. It's a every card draw of this is now two incants, which is massive in my opinion. Just so good. I gotta shoot down preserve a little bit. This was a mistake. I shouldn't have taken it, but at the same time, it once I had it, it was better than removing. It was better than like a foregone power, right? So fine. I do think Preserve in this deck would have been nice. I think the Holdover hurts this here. I don't want to play this every turn. We were also pretty close to seeing some kind of really sick infinite off of Deep Offering. But we had a bunch of trash in this deck. It would have been really hard to reduce down to that point where we could actually achieve this. But this plus like Kinstone Totem or something could have resulted in some really big plays. If we'd been able to connect the two together. Huge shout out to Sigiled Seaweed. Everyone hates on Sigiled Seaweed. Sigiled Seaweed rules. This relic is nuts. Even if it only hits 50% of the time, the 50% of the time it does hit is just so powerful. You're just like, all right, well, that guy's gone. Think about how highly I rate Unnamed Tome as a card, and then imagine a relic that has a chance to do it to everything. Amazing. Truly incredible. I, I bloody love this card. Capricious Reflection did fine. Some random upgrades here or there, pretty decent. Free resin removal, sure. You know what? Absolutely. One cost deep offering, yes. One cost fatal melting, yes. These cards become a lot more pickable with that. Even though, you know, it's not a ton of value, it's some, which is good. Shark doing shark things. Good stuff altogether. I think we hold it together here. I do think the Gorgon line can win. But I think the Gorgon is going to be flimsy, and it really depends on what we see on that steel shop, right? A large stone there, and I think we hard pivot to Gorgon immediately. And you go Gorgon plus Lodestone Totem Infusion. We play one of them, and then you have a shark as well. And the goal with that will be the Gorgon absorbs and removes the Ember Drain. 
So even though it's four ember, not a big deal, it takes Wicklash ridiculously well. It just murders floors, right? And then Lodestone Totem keeps it alive. So not as strong as like some other options here. I do think the Siren's better because you get a chance to double the Lodestone Totem, which is pretty cool. So there's that as well. But I think that's everything I've got to say here. A pretty cool run. Good stuff in my opinion. And we even hit 200 shards. Look at that planning. Wonderful work. So yeah, go team. I think we're going to leave it there. So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.